All right, so Danny Garcia versus Keith. No, I got Keith there. Brandon Rios post by review, man. This is the official one for that. Um, Danny Garcia makes a statement, man. Danny Garcia stops Brandon Rios in the ninth round with a devastating right hand to the head. I mean, dude, dude laid him out. That was that was the most devastating knockout of uh, Brandon Rios' career. A lot more devastating than when Bradley stopped him. That was referee stoppage. So, um, yeah, man, overall, I'm going to say this about Danny Garcia. I was very, uh, you know, obviously it's Rio. So with his limited abilities um, outside of fighting on the inside, you know, it's a little easier to, to, to work on your work on stuff. But I, I thought Danny did a good job staying mentally disciplined for nine rounds. You know, he didn't get discouraged when Rio's was getting hit with punch, some hard punches and kept coming forward. He stayed, he stuck to the game plan. And that shows great mental discipline. That shows great um, IQ on his behalf. And overall, man, I would just say like for Danny, I like the fact that uh, he was committed to his jab from round one because I've always gone on about his jab and how he's got a good jab, but he just never wants to use it. And he was doubling the jab up on the jab, tripling up on the jab. He was, um, you know, he was throwing – Right hand, lead right hands going forward, going backwards. He was throwing right hooks, left hooks. He was throwing, uh, you know, combinations to the body. Um, you know, sh- you know, sharp counters, uh, catch and shoot type of counters. You know, we saw different punch variations from Danny Garcia, and I think that's great to see from him because I, you know, I, I get sick of watching him sometimes when he just like throws a jab and then a hook, and that's really all he shows. But he showed a lot more tonight. And I'm hoping moving forward that he'll begin to show the variety in his punch selection like he did tonight against Brandon Rios. Now, for the Brandon Rios side of things, he definitely surprised me. Like, definitely came to fight, was on weight. I thought he maintained a good work rate for the majority of the fight. Uh, He was someone that thought he could win. Um, And there were some really good rounds from him. And I I think uh, with Brandon, I would like to see him in there with maybe some of the lower level PBC guys. Like, if. Uh, they don't want to make the Devin Alexander Victor Ortiz rematch. You know, I would like to see him fight probably like Victor Ortiz. I think that'd be a good fight. You could stick on an undercard or something like that, or maybe the main event of one of the, the smaller cards. Um, you know, he he showed tonight that look when he's when he's when he's in shape and he's ready. Um, yeah, he's not the greatest welterweight in the world, but the dude is is, is a competitor. And he's a warrior, man. He, despite that punch, Danny Garcia hit him with that right hand. He still wanted to get up. He still wanted to keep fighting. He actually got up somehow. Um, but Kenny Bayless did the right thing. Kenny Bayless waved it off, and uh, ultimately Danny Garcia made a statement in, in the welterweight division. Now, uh, a couple side notes, um, and it just shows you, man, that Danny Garcia, regardless of what you think about him, man, he's definitely a relevant fighter. Earl Spence, prior to the fight, did call Danny Garcia out. Earl Spence did say, hey, I want to get Danny Garcia by the end of the year. You know, he, he's, been, he's been ducking me and all this stuff like that. So, you know, Earl Spence wants a piece of Danny Garcia. And then you got Keith Thurman, who was in the crowd. He obviously, you know, allegedly wants – you know, that rematch at some point in time. Then, of, out of all the welterweights in the welterweight division, the one who seems to want Danny Garcia the most is Sean Port. He jumped in the ring before Danny Garcia's interview, and he was mad pissed, just pissed out of his mind. And I'm, if, if, if I'm going to guess why he's pissed, I'm assuming it's the fact that, um, you know, he's been trying to get a Keith Thurman rematch. He can't get the Keith Thurman rematch because that's kind of been put on hold because of Danny Garcia being in the picture. Danny Garcia is now the number two mandatory, and odds are the reason he's pissed off is because he knows that the WBC will probably make him fight Danny Garcia, and he probably doesn't feel he should have to fight Danny Garcia because he's held that mandatory position for so long. So I could definitely see his frustration there. But uh, if that fight does wind up happening, you know I'm very I'll be very excited for that one because stylistically that's a that's a fun fight. You know you got a guy in Porto who comes forward who can box a little bit, but mainly he comes forward, um, likes to smother you and himself sometimes, and um, Danny Garcia likes to be a counterpuncher, but I want to see more of what I saw tonight from getting Danny Garcia. When I, when I see some of the things I saw tonight, it makes me like, you know, have hope for the guy um, as far as being better than uh, what he's been over his last couple of fights. So that's my take on the fight. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get some other opinions here. We'll, we'll, start my, we'll start to my right. My man, my man, Alex, what do you think about the Danny Garcia, uh, Brandon Rios fight? Brutal knockout, bro. Shout out to Danny Garcia, Brand. Shout out to Brandon Rios for be- putting on a better fight. So, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say. I was just shocked. Yeah. So, yeah. What does uh what does Danny go from here? Um, fight Sean Porter next. Think so? Yep. Okay. I want to I, I want to see that fight after that. Okay. Face off, so and, yeah. and what did you make What did you make of Sean Porter jumping in the ring and and, and causing a scene of all hey, Sean Porter of all people, the calmest guy in the world? What, what did you call it, make it think of that? Dang, bro, I, I got so hyped, bro. But then like Jim Gray freaking ruined it. Yeah, like, Jim Gray ruined it. That was a classic. 
Like, seriously, bro. It makes me like James Tony even more, bro. Yeah, oh, because when James joined Clown, yeah. Clown Jr., yeah. yeah. So that's what it is, man. So yeah. then we'll go to my left. We'll go to my man, Paul, who was a big Danny Garcia fan. You know, it's good. It's good. What did you think of what, what did you make of uh, Danny's performance tonight? I thought it was a statement. Uh, Rio's a former champion. Obviously, uh, Danny's the favorite, you know, after a tough loss to uh, Thurman. So it makes sense that, you know, he has to have a fight where he's the favorite. And um, he delivered. I'm not going to lie. Like, um, I was impressed by how he um, put more diversity into his game plan. He jabbed more than usual, more movement. Um, but I still feel like a lot of times, like, Danny will just have guys and he'll just be just beating them and, and at, at times hitting them with, like, crazy good shots. But it'll be almost like he's almost impressed with his own shots. And it's like he'll stun someone and he'll just, like, stop and look. And it's like and you, almost, up. Yeah, you almost feel like he has this issue with, like, following up. And, and throwing more after he lands the big punch and finishing dudes off. But aside from that, man, spectacular performance. He shows that he belongs, you know, at the top at 147. And, um, man, he, he, he did what he was supposed to do. It was dope. Absolutely so. Yeah. yeah. And for what I think he should do next, I think Sean Porter is the most um, logical next thing because they both uh, fought Keith Thurman. It was both close fights. And so they should fight to see who do, they should fight. Uh, to see who deserves the rematch against Thurman the most. And then we'll find out who deserves it after they fight. And then after they fight Thurman, then clearly we would have to get the winner of that versus Spence at some point. Absolutely. What did you make of Sean Porter of all people jumping in the ring and then causing the scene? Uh, I like it. I like it, man. Like, um, you know, it's boxing, sports. They're competitors. It's competition. Adrenaline pumping. Uh, you know, Sean Porter is a former champion. Danny Garcia is a former champion. Both of them, top five, top five welterweights, and they want to they want to regain their titles. So they're making it known. And um, I'm really uh, I hope it'll be Danny versus Sean Porter because Sean Porter's style is a uh, very aggressive, but he's a lot more skilled than Rios. So it'll force more of Danny's skills to come out. And both of them are willing to trade. So I think Porter versus Garcia will be. A super amazing fight to see who gets the opportunity to either face Thurman and possibly get an opportunity to compete for a chance against Spence. So, man, let's hope they put the good fights together by the end of this year. Okay, there you have it from Paul and Alex. And uh, as for me, man, like Danny Garcia, like I said, made a statement. You know, we, we got what we wanted from him tonight, diversity in the skill set. We got a, we got a, a great result. We got a great post-fight interview. And, um, you know, Sean Porter can't find no opponents right now because he's waiting for Robert Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman's going to take a tuna fight. You know, Sean Porter won't be on his immediate to-do list. Danny's not going to fight an Earl Spence because Earl Spence is going to have his hometown fight next. So, logically, that makes sense for PBC to make that fight in the summer. And um, I'm sure both fighters are should be keen on, on making the fight happen. But, um, yeah, we had a fantastic time on the live stream. Like We had, what, psh- I don't know how many people on the damn live stream. We're talking 20,000, 30,000 people on the live stream. So if you weren't there, you're a square and you're a loser and your life is going to – I'm just joking with you. No, but you should have been there if you weren't. Um, and overall, you know, just like I'm going to say, man, the, the whole card was good. A couple of brief thoughts on the other fights that happened on that card. Uh, Ugas was really good against Sugar Robinson, like with the way he stopped him and, and got him out of there. I was thoroughly impressed with that and, how, and the accuracy of his punches. So he did look good. Benavides. Dominated, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later on in the week. But, you know, big shout out to Danny, Danny Garcia scoring the ninth round TKO. Or, no, not TKO, KO, really. No, TKO. It was technically it? a TKO, yeah. Yeah, TKO over um, Brandon Rio. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. From And also Alex and Paul's thoughts on it. And, yeah, just let me know what you guys think about this fight and what Danny Garcia is going to be doing moving forward and the whole Sean Porter thing and all the dynamics of this fight. And you can uh, love me or you can hate me. But I'm Jessica from Daniel. So, until next time, take care, guys. <laughs>